all you epic badasses out there, my name is Alicia Bellamy, aka Vert Vixen, and I would love to show you how to clean up those pesky 3D prints. Mm. 3D printing has become a household staple for many prop builders and cosplayers like myself. But how do you go from raw PLA to hopefully some legit looking armor? Well, let me show you how I assemble and clean up my 3D prints. Today, we're gonna to be assembling some calf armor from Garrison. So sadly, my printer isn't large enough to print a whole piece of armor, so I had to slice the calf into several smaller pieces. First, we have to remove all of those pesky supports. Even though they're needed during the printing process, they need to go immediately. To remove the supports, I use giant ass pliers, tiny little jewelry pliers, and as many metal files as I can fit on my desk. Let's enjoy my epic struggle while I tell you what supports are. Simply put, a 3D print is created layer by layer, and as the piece grows, supports will need to be printed to support the pieces of the print that may defy gravity. Are you all ready for the most exciting part of this video? Sanding! That's right, surprise! There is a ton of sanding involved in this process. I start off by sanding these suckers with 120 grit sandpaper and remove as many of those pesky lines as possible. Okay, so we can finally glue these pieces together. But you know what's just as important as the glue is the zip kicker. And if you don't know what zip kicker is, it instantly cures the super glue, making gluing a million times easier. But super important note, the zip kicker may give an instant cure, but the super glue will not come to a full cure for 24 hours. So glue-wise, I use something called Instacure Hobby Glue. It is one of my favorite things, and it was introduced to me from the infamous Gary Cal, AKA Beer Money Props. And speaking of awesome friends, I learned a nifty little trick from my friend over at Macro Creative that I call the peg and hole system. Creative. I modeled my pegs in the holes using Autodesk Mesh Mixer. You can also use wooden dowels or small aluminum rods. This will help hold the pieces together and is way stronger than just gluing two flat pieces together. Take it from me, I've learned the hard way. All right, so as I'm gluing this together, let me give you a few quick notes. First of all, always label your pieces as they come out of your printer, so you know which piece goes where. Before gluing anything together, use some sandpaper or an X-Acto blade to rough up your surface so the glue actually penetrates into the plastic. Make sure to check how the pieces are fitting together before you glue them. And finally, make sure to sand down the pegs and the holes so that they fit in properly. All right, it looks like everything is fitting together properly, so it's time to put some glue in those holes and all over that flat piece. Now I can stick them together, hold them firmly together, then slather some zip kicker in there, and once again, press firmly so that they do not move. The calf pieces weren't wide enough to fit correctly into the front shid guard, so I had to add some thickness. I decided to use black warbler to fill in the gaps. I cut the warbler into the correct shape, melted the two pieces together, and then I used the Instacure and Zip Kicker to hold that sucker together. The first time ever with 3D printed armor, I finally planned on how I can attach the straps to this piece. I ended up creating attachments in Autodesk Mesh Mixer that consisted of the negative space as well as the bar that the nylon webbing can just slip right through. As much as I love the Instacure, it isn't the strongest connection by itself, so I always back it with JV Plastic Weld, which, by the way, this stuff is amazeballs. This two-part epoxy is a putty that cures within two hours, is sandable, and is great to fill in all the seams and reinforce that glue. We also have to fill in all the seams in the front, and for PLA, I love Spot Putty Bondo. Like regular Bondo, this sucker is two parts, but it is super thick consistency, so it's perfect for those pesky seams. Also, alternatively, you can try Acryl Green. I've been using that a lot recently, and I also like it. The downside is, because it relies on air to cure, you cannot fill it in as deep as you can with the two-part Bondo. I don't know, maybe try a mix of both. Maybe you'll like it. Quick note, when using either of those products, make sure to wear a protective gear and work in a well-ventilated area. 
As you saw with the spot putty bondo, you just mix the two parts together and then slather the stuff all over the seams. It's ready to sand in 20 minutes and sands really well. So I like to make sure that everything is filled. Guess what guys, it's sanding time again. Woo! To sand down the epoxy and the Bondo, I like to mix between 80 grit and 120 grit. Once again, make sure you are wearing your proper safety gear. Bondo and acryl green dust is no bueno. Remember how I slathered all those seams with epoxy and Bondo? Yeah, this back part actually needed a seam, so I hit it pretty hard with the Dremel. But be careful, the Dremel can melt the plastic, so make sure to only use it on the Bondo and the epoxy. Let's prep these guys for painting. So Bill from Punish Prop showed me this epic trick. Just take a scrap piece of foam, shove a wire in it, and glue it to the back side, and now you can hang your pieces for spray painting. Now remember, let the glue cool a little bit before placing it on your 3D print, or else you may melt it. And now it's time for the crazy long layering process. My favorite filler primer to use is Dupli Color Filler Primer. Legit, this stuff is amazing. But now we layer and sand, layer and sand. For the filler primer, I like to use 180 grit automotive sandpaper, and I do about three layers of the filler. Now, as of recently, I have discovered the two-in-one filler primer by Dupli Color, thanks to Eric from Quirky Creations. I like to use this stuff for the first two layers now and then hit maybe only about one layer of filler primer after that. Saves me a little bit of time when it comes to sanding. Now we can finally use some regular primer. I use about two to three layers of the stuff depending. I sand the first layer with 220 grit and for the final layers of sanding I use 320 grit and I wet sand. Then we can apply the final layer of primer and we can paint. The wet sand is how you truly get that baby bottom smooth look. Thank you all so much for checking out my video on how I clean up my PLA prints. First of all, I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Matter Hackers. They supply me with my 3D printing filament. It's the pro PLA I'd use on every project and I highly suggest that you give it a try if you're looking to try some PLA. It stands beautifully. Just saying. <laughs> Anyways, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Also, all of the items that I've used in this video will be down in the video description, so if you're interested in purchasing the same thing, you can do that there. Finally, I do things on other platforms. Woo! I stream live on Twitch. So if you ever want to check me out on Twitch, that's twitch.tv slash vertvixen. Check me out on Facebook, facebook.com slash alishacosplay. And finally, on Twitter and Instagram, it's at vertvixen. Anyways, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your continued support. I love you. This is Alicia Bellamy, AKA Vert Vixen. Make sure, finally, one more thing, hit the subscribe button. I got tons more videos coming. Lots on 3D printing, armor building, armor cleanup, painting, and I'm doing a whole series on the Fury build I'm doing. So make sure to check that out, guys. Once again, love you, thank you for everything, and I'll see you later.